Elmer Letterman had a different idea. This goes back some years. In 1932, Elmer Letterman's business was suffering just like everybody else's business was suffering in Manhattan. He sold life insurance. If you think it's tough to get customers to spend more money to make themselves look pretty, try to sell life insurance. That's a very tough business in 1932. So what he decided to do is, instead of complaining that no one wants to buy life insurance, he decided to be part of the solution. So what he started in 1932 was a networking program. He decided to tackle the Great Depression inside Manhattan because what was going on then, just like what's going on now, is that people were losing their jobs and they were trying to start their own businesses. It was a defensive move, but it was also an economic opportunity. So every Friday, he would arrange a network lunch for three people. Not necessarily customers. They could be suspects, they could be prospects, or they could be clients. But what he would do is he'd take one person, the, the successful uh, chef that he knew from a big restaurant who'd lost his job when the restaurant closed. The chef has an idea for his own restaurant. He would invite you. What's your name? Brian, I'm going to put you on the spot. So Brian is the guy with the idea, the big idea. So you're invited. Then he would take another person here. Uh, sir, what's your name? Rick? Right on. Rick is a construction executive with a fantastic reputation of being on time and under budget. So he's going to invite Rick to this meeting, Brian, because you need to know him to get your restaurant built. And then last but not least, sir, what's your name? Ross? Ross was the last honest banker that actually didn't have alligator arms. You know, he could reach into his pocket and give a loan at that time, so he's going to invite Ross to the meeting. And what he would do at this meeting is he would glue the three of you together around an opportunity. And he would lend credibility to Brian, that Brian's a really, really good chef, comes from a great family, he's known them for eight years, he believes in them, he would introduce the opportunity to you, he would introduce the opportunity to you, start a conversation, pay the bill at 1245, and leave. And he never brought brochures or business cards to these meetings. I mean, if you said to him, I've been thinking about getting life insurance, he would look at you, Brian, like you slapped him and say, I am not here to sell you anything. I'm here because I want the three of you to meet. He could see you two years later at the opening of your restaurant on Broadway, and he wouldn't expect to be at the front of the line or get a free meal. He would look at you, shrug his shoulders, and say, how did you do it? Because that was his style. He did this 50 weeks a year throughout the entire 30s. Some people said, that's a silly idea. Through the Great Depression, why are you going to buy three people lunch with no business model 50 times a year for almost a decade? But my mentor, the late, great Stanley Marcus Jr., read a story about a sales record that Letterman's firm set in 1939 that stood till the late 50s for policies written per capita, and it puzzled him because that was not a year for setting any kind of sales records. So he took a train to New York City, and he interviewed Elmer and a few local leaders. And when he explained this to me sitting at a lunch in 1999, he said, son, do the math of goodwill, because the math of goodwill works. He says, you take three people, and you create an opportunity for them and expect nothing. You do that 50 times a year, and you compound that eight, nine, ten years, and you know what you're going to create? You're going to create a town, Manhattan, that will not do business with anybody but Elmer Letterman. You will create a town, Manhattan, of raving fans. And then he told me something. As we were all talking about viral marketing and all that stuff in 1999, he said, don't forget, doing the right thing is the original viral marketing.